Hello. In this presentation, we will cover work that has been done in the Stern Group at Northwestern University, namely probing spin dynamics in indium solenoid with time resolved curve rotation. The roadmap we will follow is 1. Motivating studying the spin degree of freedom in semiconductors. 2. Benefits of conducting spin control in layered semiconductors. 3. Apparatus and sample considerations needed to study spin properties in indium solenoid. And finally, experimental verification of predicted spin dependent optical selection rules in indium solenoid. The spin degree of freedom is a fundamental property of an electron. Spins have an up-down nature and little energy is needed to switch between these states, which is advantageous for computation. This ultimately makes spin appealing for transporting and storing information. To control the spin degree of freedom, we need a knob. So just like we can use electric fields to control the charge degree of freedom of an electron, we can use magnetic fields to control the spin. Together, we gain an enhanced control over solid state systems. Now examples of such systems will be given later. But first, let's talk briefly about what tools or methods we can actually use to manipulate the spin. In general, there are two main methods of magnetic manipulation. Magnets, typically ferromagnets, which can be controlled with current or external fields to switch between spin states. This tends to be favorable because they can be integrated into devices. However, they also tend to be static and slow. Another method is circularly polarized light. This can allow us to select spin states with one of the circular helicities. The advantage of this method is that we can do dynamic and fast switching between spin states. And in this presentation, we will focus on utilizing this intriguing knob. A quintessential piece to our ability to couple light to spin is a spin orbit interaction. This interaction leads to the splitting of solid state bands and materials like gallium arsenide. They also help facilitate and influence spin polarized optical selection rules. And these optical selection rules allow us to control spin states in these materials. And with this control over spin, spin based technologies have been created and studied with classic materials such as 3.5 semiconductors. This includes optical spin transport, optical spin memory, and optical spin coherence. However, 3.5 semiconductors are not the only interesting platforms for spin-based devices. Layered or 2D semiconductors are another class of materials that are interesting for spin manipulation. In general, 2D materials are thin and flexible, thus easy to integrate into devices they are also stackable, thus we can build structures layer by layer, which allows for interesting opportunities to exploit electronic and magnetic phenomena. The canonical 2D materials for spin manipulation are the transition monocalcogenides, or TMDs. These materials are at the center of the field of electronics. These systems have valleys, which are separated in case space. These pseudo-spin states can be accessed by one of the helicities of circularly polarized light, and these can be designed to be analogous to spin trunks. The spin states are also stuck in a particular valley, which could have applications for information storage. However, this spin valley locking, as it's called, limits our ability to dynamically manipulate spin between spin states, which has been an advantage for 3.5 devices some of which were mentioned before. So we can ask a question, is there a 2D material without spin valley locking and more analogous to 3.5 semiconductors? Indium solenite is a layered material that has been predicted to have spin polarized optical selection rules near the gamma point. This means that it has a direct 
band gap selection rules. No spin value locking, therefore a closer parallel to 3-5 semiconductors. On top of this, indium solenoid has been experimentally demonstrated to have a layer-dependent band gap, high electron mobility, and interesting transport properties. And when we take these all together, we can see that indium solenoid is a potential platform for future spin-based devices. Thus, the objective of this work is to demonstrate or verify polarized dependent optical selection rules in layered indium solenoid. What's needed to accomplish this is one, a viable sample for the experiment, two, a spin sensitive experimental setup, and three, we have to experimentally establish optically induced spin polarization. So first, let's start with an overview of indium solenoid. Indium solenoid is a group three monocalcogenide. These materials have four main stacking polytypes, which determine crystal symmetry. Crystal symmetry determines strength of spin splitting, or spin over coupling. These class of materials are predicted to have spin over coupling for the monolayer, as well as the sigma, gamma, and epsilon bulk, as well as for restricted cases of the beta bulk. And for these particular cases, they, they are predicted to have sizable spin splitting which is needed for effective coupling between polarized light and spin. Another property of indium solenoid that must be considered is its environmental instability. This can be tracked with photoluminescence over time. Here is a plot showing the degradation of thin indium solenoid under one milliwatt of green light. The blue curve is the degradation of the sample in ambient, green in vacuum, and red at 10 Kelvin. This highlights indium solenized air sensitivity. Therefore, preparation of thin layers must be in an inert environment like a nitrogen glove box. This solves some problems. However, indium solenide also degrades in solutions like chloroform, which is used to fabricate devices. Now, there has been work done by groups like the Hurston Group at Northwestern where they present potential solutions to this problem. But for simplicity, bulk is used in this work because of its slow degradation, its large size, and that spin polarization should still persist. To actually probe these spin properties in indium solenoid, we can use a true and tried method, timer solve curve rotation. Using a femtosecond pulse laser, we can create two beams, a pump and a probe. These two pulses can be separated in time, which we can control with a mechanical delay line. First, the circularly polarized pump is incident on the sample at a photon energy near the band edge for bulk indium solenoid. These energies are accessible by a tie staff laser. If spin polarization is possible with light, the pump should excite a spin orientation into the conduction band. When this occurs, the system is knocked out of equilibrium and this creates changes to the index of refraction. After the pump, a linear probe is then incident on the sample. This will track the changes due to spin asymmetry in the system through the rotation of its linear polarization, or Kerr rotation, as a function of time. Thus, we can be very sensitive to spin polarization in the system. Another crucial component to perform these experiments is a magneto optical cryostat that can be used with free space optics. Quantum Design has designed the optical in which we are beta testing. It is accessible by a pulse laser, can cool samples to about 1.5 Kelvin, as well as give access to high magnetic fields. On the right is a picture of our setup to utilize the system with our pulse lasers. The top right image is a picture of our long focal length lens used to focus our beams on samples. Here is a top view image where we have a homemade mounting structure which allows us to use the side window. With this system and our timers all curve setup, we have the ability to do low temperature magneto optical experiments, which are crucial to our ability to study spin dynamics in materials like indium solenoid. This is a picture of the bulk indium solenoid measure. The large flake and gold marker above it makes conducting these pump probe measurements easier. And here is the data from this sample. 
The y-axis represents the rotation of the linearly polarized probe, or curvitation, and the x-axis is the time separation between the pump and the probe, labeled as time delay. The green dotted curve represents generating a spin orientation in the system with one helicity of circularly polarized light, which will decay since the system is being pumped into a non-equilibrium state. Now when the opposite helicity of light is used, the signal is flipped, which occurs because we are inducing the other spin orientation, shown in the red dotted curve. And when linearly polarized light is used, the signal is quenched because equal amounts of spin up and spin down electrons are being excited in the system, which is shown by the blue curve. This clearly demonstrates the optical orientation in bulk indium solenoid. Now these experiments were done with a photon energy of roughly 1.305 electron volts, which is where the signal is maximized. On the right is a heat map of the curve spectrum. The y-axis marks the photon energy, the x-axis the time delay, while the color represents the strength of the curve signal. And it can be seen that the signal is maximized somewhere between 1.3 electron volts and 1.31 electron volts. Since spin polarization has been established, it would also be good to know if we can get another favorable property, and that is precession of spin in the magnetic field. This is important as this would distinguish indium solenoid from TMDs, which do not have this property, and make it more analogous to 3-5 semiconductors, which do have this property. The experiment is depicted in the left image. When spin is oriented perpendicular to an external magnetic field, it should precess in this field. This experiment is done using the optical superconducting magnet. The image on the right is experimental data at 6 tesla, and it shows short-lived but clear oscillations for both helicities of light and indium solenoid. What this experimentally demonstrates is that spins are not locked to valleys as they are in TMDs. This gives further evidence that because indium solenoid has direct band gap selection rules, it is a closer parallel to 3-5 semiconductors. So to conclude, the outlook of this work can be seen in that spin and electronic properties of indium solenoid offer another platform for building spin-based devices. We can generate spin polarization and observe spin precession in bulk indium solenoid. These initial fundamental studies then can be stepping stones to further understand spin dynamics in this system. Taking a moment to acknowledge those who have contributed to this work in the Stern Group, MERSEC REU, and the Mark Hurston Group, as well as acknowledgments to the funding sources that have made this work possible. Thank you for listening.